Hey everybody in the blogging plaza. Well, here I am. This is my new apartment. I know it's unfinished. Uh, I, I just recently came here. Uh, it's nighttime. I'm I'm gonna do some things here to you know to make the room impeccable. And as you can see, it, uh, this this is a. Uh, 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 this is a little bit of an early recording that I'm doing, mostly because, well, I'm just recording on my camera and there's no Wi-Fi yet, so I can't polish it on YouTube, yet at least. And of course, because I'm busy there. But like I said, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop vlogging. And by the way, I, I did make uh, some good advances on my Japan video. I'm now... I, I'm, I'm almost I'm almost finishing the fourth and the fifth episode at the same time, uh, but of course there's uh, but of course all these delays happen because of you know the, this. Yep, yeah, you notice I have some new stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna bother to show you everything. Uh, I do have I do have plans to put my plushies in a place where you can see them. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's kind of like a new site. And speaking of vlogging, I, I think it is time for me to talk to you about the latest movie that I just saw. Ah oh, man, because the movie I saw, it kind of uh, touched me a little bit. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have my computer or the internet to you know to check out check out some of the things. So think about it as a little bit of my exercise of memory. So here goes. The memory, the movie that I just saw today was none other than uh, the latest DreamWorks film, uh, Abominable. I was actually, you know, uh, I, I was expecting this movie. I was a, a little bit, not by much, because there was a little bit of a fear that it was gonna be, you know, the typical silly DreamWorks with lots of pop culture and all that stuff. That's basically my biggest fear from most of my of DreamWorks movies. So anyway, what so what can I say about this movie? Um, the best way I can describe this is is what will happen if you mix the Missing Link, uh, Smallfoot, and a little bit of ma Disney magic into it, because it is basically a movie about the abominable snowman, and it's the typical you know. <laughs> Big huge snowman, uh, well, snow monster, or Jetty, whatever you want to call it, befriends kids, and, and they go on an adventure and they have to be on the run of, of poaching adults. That's basically the, this movie in a nutshell. But, but I'm here to and criticize it, at least if it has some merit that, that makes it a, a, kind of like a standalone movie. And uh, here I am, uh, my, my first movie review in my own apartment. Okay, like us like a start, uh, a little bit of a synopsis, of, uh, more detailed synopsis of Abominable. Uh, the movie it basically centers on this on this young uh, young girl from China. The movie is set on. China. Set, uh, it takes place in China, despite everyone talking in English. Okay, I'm not gonna go nitpick out of it. There's this girl uh, named Yen, uh, Yun. Uh, I think it was called Yun. Uh, uh, Yun. Uh, she uh, she has a little bit of grief over over the death of her father, uh, and that makes her very distant to her family. She kind of chooses to become a loner. She doesn't share her feelings, and but most of all, she is. Being independent, she tr she uh, she tries to w work on many odd jobs so she can but she can buy herself a trip ar ar around Asia, and uh, but then she discovers on her rooftop that there is this big abominable snowman on uh, on it that has been chased by this group this big group of people who they want to hunt him down. She takes pity on him, she tends his wounds, and she befriend she befriends him. But then, after shenanigans, uh, she goes on. Uh, she she uh, she goes on the run with the big with the big abominable snowman, 
and and, and two of her, two of her two of her neighbors, and, and they go to crisscrossing uh, some parts of Asia in order to return the abominable snowman into to his to his uh, to his home world, which is the Himalaya Himalayas. That's the best way I can describe this. But if you want me to tell if I like this movie, I already told you that. I, what I like about this movie is that it did kind of remind me of some touches that I kind of relate to. Especially the, the, the parts of the tricks. Because, uh, because as you can see, the thing that made me relatable to uh, the main character is her pursuit to, to go uh, to afford a trip uh, that goes around, uh, you know, around the places that she wanted to go. That kind of made me remain, remind me of my struggles of earning money in order to finally complete my dream trip, which was none other than Japan. I still, I still have big, uh, I still feel really good at making this trip. I never regret it. I, I did great. And that's, that's the only thing that I, that I feel relatable on this thing. But that's the only personal thing that I'll say. So I'll have I'll try to talk to you about the movie as a whole. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with the voice with the characters because for me it's pointless to talk about voice acting, mostly because I think none of the voice actors are mostly big superstars from what I can I can see, and they do a decent job I'll say, and. and and you know the characters, the main character are actually really likable. Let's talk the Abraman of the, like this, like the Jenny. The Jenny is uh, they name him Everest uh, because uh, because if he well he they, uh, the main character just noticed that he he, he saw the saw a billboard with uh, with Ed, with Mount Everest in it. He's really cute. I gotta admit in and the reason. The reason he he uh, he warms up to the character is that is because he's basically kind of like a, li a, l a little wild kid, and he, he and he's cute. I really like the design. He, he's really likable. I gotta say, very playful. But they do. I like that they did kind of have this touch of magic that practically he is basically a geomancer because he has this power that he goes like. Mm, something like that with his hair and he basically controls almost everything from his surrounding. I mean it makes blueberry go big it 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 it, it moves that you know the the uh, uh, the, the formation of the earth he controls water but so basically he's kind of like the avatar. <laughs> So really, you might find this creature kind of overpowered in, in one way or another. And then we, uh, uh, then we got our main character. Uh, what was he? Uh, well, I'll call her the girl uh, because I kind of forget the name. I, I intend to be forgetful. Uh, uh, she doesn't. She basically comes off, you know, as a character that is. Relatable in the sense that she's passing through a grief and she becomes kind of like a loner. She's not mean spirited. She has some good morals. The thing is that uh, the thing is that she's just trying to find out a way to cope out uh, the death of her father. Uh, one of the things that she keep from her pa from uh, uh, from um, the memento of her father is none other than the violin. She likes to play the violin, even though she doesn't share with anyone her uh, that she's very talented. Mostly because, well, she doesn't she doesn't want to be with anyone, and she wants to make this trip in in, in order to in, in order to if what I what I can gather is let out that kind of emotion. And I gotta admit that I just hope I just hope that the the, the scenes in which she plays violin they were. Uh, they're legit violin, uh, uh, violin, uh, they, they're, they have the actor playing the violin very well because the violin scenes are really beautiful. I gotta admit that. This is the, uh, this is probably a, a one thing that I admire about the, the way she played the violin. The other character, the other character that follows her is this, her neighbor, is this, 
with this guy who is prim, proper, he's a ladies man, he, he eats his room, he's, he's cute, and, uh, and it's, yeah, he's, he's not exactly a douche, but sometimes he acts like a douche, but, but you can see that he's technically a little bit of a jerk with a heart of gold that, uh, that he, also, he, he also has difficulty opening it up to his emotion, I, and sometimes when, com when some comic relief happens, it, it are hilarious. It's technically kind of like the punching bag of of someone who is so prim and proper, but then he gets dirt. He gets dirty, and 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 he also has his own his own kind of little arc in himself to uh, to be a, a little bit less pompous and and go and and go along with his with his other friends. And the third character is none other than than the guy, the guy's cousin. The, he was this little kid who is very active. He's very playful. He loves basketball, and he he basically is kind of like the bridge of the emotions. Um, he he's technically a little kid, and some people might find him annoying, but he's not. He kind of reminds me of the little kid from Up for some reason. Well, for one thing, is that he's chubby. Uh, he's chubby. He's the he's the one who plays the most with well with Everest the 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 Jenny. Is, um, and his relationship is really likable. Again, he's technically kind of like the bridge who who you know joins the characters together into this journey. And then we got the antagonist. Of course, I have to talk about the antagonist. The antagonist, I will say that. I, I wish they could they could develop it a little bit further because I think this is a little bit kind of like the weakest part. But it shows that it has some promise because there's a little bit something that I do like. But here it goes. You know that every time in these kind of movies, there's always some kind of of douchebag society or organization or poacher that they they want to they want ch to chase down. You know, for riches and all this stuff. And usually the heads of the bet. The head of the organization is, is the main bad guy. Well, this one's technically no difference, but there's a little bit of a twist. But if I had to tell you, it could spoil a little bit the, the movie. So even though this is recording, I'll put a little bit of a uh, mini spoiler here. So here it goes. Uh, the main, uh, the pr practically what, who is supposed to be the main villain is this crudgy, crudgy old man who. He was an explorer when he was when he was young, and he said that he 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 basically found out the the yeti when on one of his trips to the Himalayas. But he saw it so briefly that when he tell tell his story to everyone, he gets laughed at, and uh, and of course uh, that makes him very very bitter to the point that he just kind of build a rich organization where he could get a group of men to discover you know. Uh, what was it? Uh, any kind of just mysteries that uh, mysteries that are all over the world. He even had this collection of snakes that I want to say they're cute, but you know that I hate snakes. But the weird thing about the snakes is that they go like whoop 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 whoop. That's kind of weird. And um, honestly, I, if I wish that. They could have shown a little bit more of that, of flashbacks of this guy, in order to at least feel some kind of emotion on this on the on the guy. We we only get a flashback of of uh, his past briefly, but it's kind of almost during the end of the movie. But it will happen work better if they could show it a little bit more about it, this kind of emotion. Because when he tells it, you know that there is some kind of emotion in it. He doesn't do it for greed. It's kind of like a desperation to prove that he's right. And in ways, you find him not exactly like a grand villain. He's kind of like pitiful. But if there's a little uh, villain, th that's where or there's this, there's a little bit of the twist like that. Do you know that these kind of movies, they all, the kind of like the grand villain always has kind of like this warming assistant or kind of like this, uh, you know, that they follow him around and all this stuff. Guess what? The assistant is actually the villain. It, and the, in this one, the villain is actually this woman who she talks like this with this really, really fakeish 
British accent. And man, that she, you might find her that she's. Uh, she, uh, the funny thing is that I kind of hated this character the more she talked. And this British accent that it feels like. How can they say it? It feels like a combination that is too phony and but too nice at the same time. It's this woman scientist that she kind of talks about the preservation and all this stuff. But guess what? She actually is the bad guy because it is later revealed that she is secretly uh, uh, kind of like a poacher that wants the creature uh, to sell them for money and all this stuff. And when she technically becomes the bad guy, she loses her British accent. And she also did say that she that, that she fakes the, that British accent. And the funny thing is that, you know what? I'm gonna say it. Uh, when she has the glasses and she has the ponytail, and then later when she she loses the ponytail, I don't know. It, for some reason, here's the thing: for if, if, uh, is it me or when she has the ponytail and the glasses, she kind of looks like Alice in Prangler slash Obscurus Lupa. And when she loses the hair, she kind of looks like an evil Merida from Brave. That's just me. I actually like the angle that to have the assistant being the villain. Um, that's technically the only one of the things that I acknowledge about this film in terms of the villains. Okay, let's go on now with the technicalities. It's no mystery that this movie oh, is gonna look beautiful. It's DreamWorks, it, and honestly, I always say this any time, every time. When it's animation nowadays, and when it's made by a big budget production, in like DreamWorks or Disney, uh, the same, same beautiful animation is always a given. It's always kind of, it's, it's pretty much unfair to tell them that, oh, the animation is great, oh, the, the, this looks beautiful. Well, yeah, but that's nothing, unless your movie sucks. And you know what? This one, uh, uh, I really like that, and it does it, it does have a heart into it, and it shows that they try to make a, a kind of like a story, and it's paced okay. I'll say this that it is paced okay, but I do say that it is really recommendable, especially because there is a scene where they go to this big Buddha. And there is, a, I'm not going to exactly reveal something that magical that happens, but it's really heartwarming. And probably the scene, again, with the Buddha and with the violin and all that stuff, that's probably one of the most beautiful moments that you can see in this film. And it was mesmerizing. And, and I feel sad that when I went to the movie theater, there was barely any people in it, because many people should benefit from watching something that's, uh, some... Uh, some good, uh, some good floral animation. That's, uh, that's, that's technically I could say about this, about uh, some of the credits that I gift on this film. Um, and you know what? I don't think that I have enough, uh, so much, so much to talk about uh, abomination. Um, it's a, it's a good movie. I'll say I'll, it. It touches my heart, and I, I like it. Again, I like the character. I like the emotion. I like the, I like, uh, I like some of the things that happen. It's not a perfect movie. It goes a little bit, it, it goes a little bit. How can I say, too safe. I, I, and the movie, the movie plays a little bit safe, and it, it goes a little bit by the book on these kind of movies with a few twists here and there. But I, I don't mind. But personally, I think that I, I think the uh, the missing link uh, was a slightly better movie than than Abomination, but and boy, that it makes me feel guilty saying it because it's a beautiful film. It's uh, I'm not, and again, this is my only my non-expert opinion about this. I tried to play it as professional as possible, but. I got I feel a little bit, you know, nervous, exhausted on this, you know, now that I'm living in this apartment now alone. Oh man. It's kind of like the, the main character who is now taking a, you know, another step on a, on a journey, let's say. So I wish me wish me luck, guys. Uh I hope I hope that for next week uh 
uh, for the next movie, I'm, I'm gonna have the things uh, things mostly ready, and you'll 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 get a, a better background, and and I get and I decide to make a little bit more motivated videos. But in in the meantime, uh, 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 wish me luck, and. Let's not catch that filthy animal.